Once a video game displays franchise potential, it makes sense from a business standpoint to toss out as many follow-ups as possible. Because of this, some installments never get the attention they deserve if the franchise happens to have a bunch of titles in it. Whatever the case may be, not all of these sleeper hits are masterpieces, but they definitely should have received a lot more love. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 most underappreciated video games in major franchises. Number 10, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. It's disheartening when a video game is discarded just because of the failure of a separate installment. After the bafflingly awful Assassin's Creed Unity, Ubisoft's biggest IP was tainted. When Syndicate was released the following year, even the most devoted fans gave it a pass, erroneously believing it contained the same flaws as the previous title. This attributed to Syndicate suffering insultingly low sales, further cementing its reputation as a failure. And yet, Syndicate actually has plenty to offer. Setting the story in London during the Industrial Revolution was a welcome departure for the series. There's a lot of entertaining banter with historical figures, including Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, and Queen Victoria. Syndicate was also the first entry to feature dual protagonists, who each had their own skills and styles, which diversified the gameplay. The missions were far less frustrating since auto-fail stipulations have been restricted, and the Batman-styled rope launcher makes it easier than ever to reach higher platforms, perform aerial tasks, and escape from enemies. While breaking down all these positive factors, it's hard to believe Syndicate was dismissed so harshly. It's not perfect, but its infamy is completely unwarranted. Number 9. Uncharted Golden Abyss after the success of the first three Uncharted games, Bend Studio got to work on a PS Vita spin-off called Uncharted Golden Abyss. Due to the hardware limitations of a handheld, gamers safely assumed that this entry couldn't match the rest of the series. Also, it wasn't reassuring how the project was helmed by the guys behind Bubsy 3D. To the disbelief of everyone, Golden Abyss wasn't hindered by the system at all. In fact, many reviewers stated that the graphics were on par with home console titles at the time, and looked as visually impressive as the original Uncharted. Alright, so what about controls though? Surely they'd be impaired on a portable console? Well, not at all. Using the touch controls, Drake can fluidly interact with his surroundings, complete puzzles, leap across platforms, aim his weapon, and take cover from enemies. Sure, the narrative has some weak moments, mainly down to some inconsistent pacing, but Golden Abyss as a whole turned out to be way better than it had any right to. It's a pity this exclusive wasn't included in Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection or The Legacy of Thieves Collection, since it would have allowed a whole new audience to experience this wonder for the very first time. Number 8. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks Mortal Kombat spin-offs aren't just bad, they're frequently as atrocious as games can possibly be. With Midway's track record, it seemed logical for them to swear off MK spin-offs for good. Instead, Mortal Kombat co-creator Ed Boon said, hey, let's give it another shot, and devised a co-op beat-em-up called Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Anyone who was expecting a disaster from this unwanted spin-off, which was pretty much everybody, was blown away by its smooth co-op system, well-balanced moves and combos, and creative finishes, including the new Mortalities. And yet Shaolin Monks has been left in the dust. Sure, Mortal Kombat 9 was responsible for getting the flagging fighting series back on track, but its best qualities stemmed from Shaolin Monks, including the focus on character development and interweaving the overarching narrative with combat encounters. In many ways, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks is the progenitor to what the franchise has become in recent years. Number 7. Far Cry 2 even though Far Cry 2 was well received, it didn't capture the magic of the original. And when Far Cry 3 was revered as the series' best, a mantle that it probably still holds today, Far Cry 2 got lost in the shuffle. That's a pity since Far Cry's first sequel is anything but disappointing. Rather than making the heroic mercenary a badass, the lead character finds himself constantly outgunned. He's also hindered by malaria and the fact that his gun keeps exploding. Although Far Cry 2 was initially criticized for those factors, it was eventually regarded as one of the game's biggest strengths. After all, the player gets a greater sense of accomplishment when they triumph if their character is highly vulnerable. Far Cry 2 also utilizes a dynamic weather system that makes the gameplay more realistic. The one note characters have been swapped out for a morally ambiguous ensemble who are, you know, actually more interesting. But because Far Cry 3 refined these elements to perfection, it's often depicted as Far Cry 2 done right. 
casting this underrated sequel in a bad light. Number 6. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed After all the disaster of Sonic R, it seemed sensible for Sega to steer the Blue Hedgehog as far from the racing circuit as possible. Nevertheless, Sega decided to have another crack at it, with Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Sadly, it was another crash and burn. The kart racer was further proof that the Sonic property should stick to platforming. Also, why does a speedster like Sonic even need a car? Anyway. Refusing to back out of the race just yet, the developers decided to try again with a sequel, and surprise surprise, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed didn't suck. The tracks have far more variety since many of them change throughout the race, and Transformed boasts a hefty and surprisingly eccentric roster, including characters from Super Monkey Ball, Ninja Gaiden, Golden Axe, and Football Manager. However, it's the racer's transport that received the biggest upgrade. Throughout every race, the player can switch their vehicle through car, plane, and boat by passing through a transformation gate. Deciding whether to use these gates is crucial since each vehicle mode has its own strengths and weaknesses. It sounds like a simple concept, but it adds a massive layer of strategy, making every race way more engaging. Number 5. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops even if you eat, drink, and sleep Metal Gear, it's nearly impossible to have played every single game. There are 20 entries after all. And since MGS Portable Ops was a PSP exclusive, some of the biggest fans might not have heard of it. That's a shame since Portable Ops has everything an MGS admirer would want. Firstly, it contains features unseen in Hideo Kojima's Spy Saga at the time, as it was the first entry with multiplayer options, including co-op and versus modes. Portable Ops also allowed Snake to recruit enemies and turn them into soldiers through rigorous training missions. Every other aspect is stellar, whether it's the controls, the graphics, or the stealth mechanics. The enemy AI exhibits such realistic behavior and tactics tactics, it's hard to understand how the developers program them so well on a PSP. On top of all that, every track of Norihiko Hibino's original score is an absolute banger. To say Portable Ops is underrated really doesn't quite do it justice. Number 4. Final Fantasy V Final Fantasy VI is the undisputed champion of 2D RPGs, but in a way, Final Fantasy VI is too good since its success has superseded every other 2D entry in the series, including Final Fantasy V. This sequel isn't without its flaws, but it deserves recognition for its influential job system. Although character classes debuted in Final Fantasy III, this installment perfected the mechanic, allowing the player to choose between a whopping 22 jobs. By repeatedly using these job skills, each player will master them, allowing them to implement these moves into their repertoire permanently. Not only does this diversify the team's skill set, it gives the player more freedom with how they want to operate each character. Even though certain elements in Final Fantasy haven't aged all that well, this component holds up after 30 years. Final Fantasy V should also be commended since it was the first installment to perma-kill a main party member. Sorry Aerith, you can't get the credit for that one. When Galif is murdered at the halfway point, it left players blindsided. Although key characters were killed off in Final Fantasy 2 and 3, Galif's death packed a bigger punch since he was there from the very beginning. Number 3. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes In 2002, gamers couldn't go anywhere without being reminded that Metroid Prime was awesome. No, awesome isn't the right word. Due to its focus on exploration, creative battle mechanics, and its atmospheric soundtrack, Prime was hailed as a masterpiece, a showstopper, the be-all and end-all, and other hyperbolic titles. Although Retro Studios' first-person shooter was incredible, it wasn't perfect. It might sound blasphemous, but Metroid Prime 2 Echoes did certain things better. All right, bear with us. Despite the fact that some bosses in the first entry were cool, the majority of them were simply beefed up versions of the common enemies. Furthermore, a lot of the fights relied on blasting and strafing rather than strategy. But for Echoes, the developers did everything in their power to ensure that bosses like Boost Guardian and Spider Guardian were innovative, elaborate, and rock hard. Quadraxis earned special mention since he's regarded as among the best bosses in video game history. Seriously, fighting this nasty chap is 
is a work of art. Echoes deserves further praise since it has far less backtracking. When Samus acquires a new power-up, the player should recognize where to use it to open up a new path. Instead of forcing the player to run around for half an hour to reach their destination, the game often creates a smooth shortcut that takes Samus there instantly once she picks up a key power-up. The backtracking is minimized further since our heroine can teleport around the planet once she obtains the light suit. Metroid Prime is the superior game, but Echoes isn't far behind. Number two, God of War Ghost of Sparta. After the success of God of War Chains of Olympus on the PSP, Ready at Dawn released a follow-up called God of War Ghost of Sparta. Naturally, this installment has everything fans have come to expect from the series. Epic cutscenes, creative puzzles, sharp combat, challenging bosses, and a fair amount of deity killing. There's also the mandatory sex minigame. Although Chains of Olympus is technically superior, Ghost of Sparta leaves a bigger impression, since it focuses far more on fleshing out Kratos. After learning more about our anti-hero's childhood, his family, and his twin brother, players saw a more human side to the demigod. Considering how entertainingly gruesome the battles can get, it's impressive that Ready at Dawn crafted a God of War sequel where players care more about Kratos' past than mauling screen-filling monsters to a pulp. Because the series seemingly wrapped with God of War 3 a few months prior, Ghost of Sparta felt like an unnecessary installment. But not only did it prove to be an excellent entry, it expanded on Kratos' Kratos' origins and the lore of the Greek pantheon, which strengthened the overarching narrative as a whole. Number 1. The Legend of Zelda – A Link Between Worlds Oh my god, I didn't know this game was on this list. I love this game. I bought a 3DS for this game. Okay, that's the Jessica's injection part of the list done. Let's get back to James Egan's actually good words. There are so many great video games that have been underestimated or discounted purely because they weren't available on a console. Like I said, I had to buy a 3DS for this one, but I got the cool Link Between Worlds one, which is gold, so at least that was something. When Nintendo fans debate which is the best entry in the medieval fantasy, series, this 3DS exclusive is rarely mentioned. However, anyone who's played this masterpiece should be bewildered to understand why that's the case. Although Breath of the Wild was applauded for its non-linear progression, A Link Between Worlds did it first, since Link can tackle dungeons in any order he sees fit. The mechanic that allows Link to pass freely through walls as a 2D painting literally adds a new dimension to the gameplay. Characters like Ravio, Yuga, Hilda, and Irene are such great additions to the lore, fans hope to see them appear in the future. The new Sand Rod and the Tornado Rod are among the most imaginative items in the whole franchise. Then there's the creative puzzles, the epic bosses, the luscious graphics. Honestly, I could go on and on. No, that's James saying I could go on and on, but I could too. This one is so good, it's genuinely difficult to pinpoint a single flaw. It was my game of the year when it came out. Okay, there's the Kaku minigame, which is super annoying, but I feel like most things related to Kaku is a pretty annoying in Legend of Zelda. It's a bold claim, but A Link Between Worlds is up there with the heavy hitters, like A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, and Ocarina of Time. Seriously, if you haven't played this one, seek it out. 